Hi there, welcome to another episode of Shit Goes Wrong. Um, this, I'm already kind of into this because this was my <clears throat> workshop PC. This is what normally I would use when I'm in my uh, labby kind of workshop. So um, I was recording a video of a teardown of some scientific equipment and this Intel Nook uh, this is a 6th 6th sixth gen i3 nook that I had bought for work for something this junction product and retasked to be my workshop PC and it's run for a long time and this is a, a roughly 2015 2016 vintage machine and you know for an i3 uh, to work down here I could run KiCad and amazing how much stuff you can do on a 2016 vintage i3 I mean really and uh, you know why didn't I get a newer one earlier because uh, it works and it takes a lot of time and energy to move your, to basically uh, call the movers and move from one house to another house and pack up your crap over here and then unpack your crap and then realize you forgot stuff you loved over here and move it over there. And I know everybody does it. I know it's, if I got a Chromebook, I don't know, life wouldn't be smoother, but I don't know, maybe if I got a Mac, it would be easier. Who knows? But um, I am run a lot of Windows stuff and I run a lot of Windows subsystem for Linux and fairly intense for a, a hobbyist, fairly intense stuff. So anyway, back to the, the main point, I was recording that, that video and this thing just turned off. It didn't, um, you know, it didn't go moan and groan and it didn't give me error messages and it didn't send me a letter. Uh, it definitely didn't uh, kind of wobble around and then fall over. It just stopped. So uh, this is an Intel... Uh, product and um, I mean who's seen a schematic for a PC in forever nobody so uh, there's no schematics for it or anything but nevertheless even with kind of basic troubleshooting skills and basic electronic skills I may have gotten to the bottom of what's wrong with it and I did not film taking this apart as I mentioned but uh, I don't think I lost much because we all know how to take PCs apart if you're at this point the days are long gone of saying oh little Billy builds his own computers you know, he's so smart, he builds a computer because he can plug in this and pl put a CPU in and put a cooler on top of stuff. Those days, you know, when I was a little kid, that was, people thought I was amazing because I could build a computer and I thought, well, I mean, I'm plugging some parts in and screwing in some screws. Uh, there are people in factories all around the world doing much better than I am on this, but um, but what I did get is uh, the, the what's wrong with it. I think I've got that. And... Um, the, the stuff you'd need to figure this out, are it's pretty basic. Um, well, one of them is ancient also. This was my dad's uh, Rico Tone variable adapter, and it weighs about 20 pounds for its big chunk of iron and magnetics in here. So this is a linear power supply with a switchable voltage and a bunch of little TP tips on there that I keep around here for just this kind of purpose, for stuff that I want to basically wreck. Um, one of the tips that fits in here uh, plugs into the power supply. <clears throat> so, of course, the first thing you say is, did you check the wall wart power supply? And I did. I stuck my <clears throat> handy volt ohm meter, my DOM, my digital ohm masterpiece <clears throat> into it, and I set it to voltage DC, <clears throat> stuck one probe into the center of it. This is like this is a um, recap of the stuff that you missed in the prior episode that, well, nobody filmed. Stick one probe in the center, one on the outside. I get like 20 volts. This thing's rated for 19 volts, I think, at, uh, let's say, 3.5 amps, I believe it was. <clears throat> yep, I got 3.5 amps there. All right, let's do the next thing. We plug the power supply. Again, um, if, you have, if I didn't say this already, I'm filming this on my camera, which I don't normally do. Normally, I would be dumb enough to film vertical video, but I actually didn't this time. So, uh, I'm one-handed. I don't have stuff to hold my camera. Well, this camera. I normally use this camera. My IPv0, IPRV0. I don't know what this is called. IP Evo. That's it. Oh, can we get back to the topic? Really? Man. ADD, what is the deal, right? <clears throat> so the next thing I did was to plug this in to the power input jack on the motherboard, which I can't find right now. Uh, there it is. So plug this into here, power it up, and then I 
put one probe here and one probe on the on the shell, which I'd already verified is the negative, is the, the casing of this uh, power input jack. <clears throat> Plug this in and immediately notice that it is drawing uh, 20 volts. And on the multimeter, you have a bar graph. On this multimeter anyway, you have a bar graph that shows up down here. And that bar graph is much faster. It updates at 25 or 40 times a second, whereas this updates maybe five times. And you can see that bar graph popping up and down <clears throat> like this. Full, back, full, back, full, back. And if you manually range it so you don't have to wait for the ranging to, to happen on the multimeter, if you manually range this up to like <clears throat> 20 volts, uh, one decimal place, <clears throat> you could see it rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall. And of course, if you really want to go kooky, you can hook it up to this, put the scope on there, and you can see the same pulsing of the voltage much faster. But this was plenty. Didn't need a scope for this repair. Well, for this troubleshooting, I'm getting ahead of myself, right? Because I haven't fixed it. But um, you see this thing jumping, you know that this power supply is going into overload. Almost certainly. Could be that the power supply has failed. We're not measuring current yet. We're only measuring voltage. It's It's... Basically, probably a short circuit, so um, when this power supply turns on, it draws maximum current, the power supply shuts down, waits a moment, turns on again. Fairly typical behavior for a switching power supply like this, for a switch mode power supply. Uh, could have blown a fuse in it, but I doubt there's a fuse in it. I'm sure it's a resettable fuse, and that's why I did that. <clears throat> well, anyway, um, I'm getting ahead of myself because I confirmed that. And that's how I know all this. How did I know all this? Because I'm a genius. I mean, it should be obvious by now. I'm a genius. That's how I knew all this. No, the truth is I confirmed it. <clears throat> what I did was come over here to this crazy box. And I set it for the 19 volts that it was good for. And I set it for 3.5 amps. If I can actually run this thing. 3.5 amps. So now it's set to produce 19 volts at 3.5 amps which if you read the label on here, which is tiny, uh, somewhere in here it says 19 volts, 3.5 amps. So I've basically simulated that wall power supply, but I get more information here. And then I turn it on, which it is right now, and I plug it in to here with that Rico Tone uh, proper plug. And where is that? Here it is. My bench is a mess because I was in the middle of recording that video. Well, it's really because my bench is usually a mess. So you plug this in. Uh, well, I didn't say that either. First thing I verify is that center pin was positive on this one. Stick the multimeter leads into the plug. Make sure that it's when I put the red into the center and the black around the edge, I don't get a minus. And then I connect this thing up one way or the other. I put my multimeter in here, make sure the center is red and the outside is black. And I verify that I don't get a minus. And then I know that uh, it's not a negative voltage. Therefore, I haven't flip-flopped them. So now I'm happy and I say, well, I'm about to behave like a power supply. <clears throat> plug this in here. Immediately look up here as I plug it in, or you could plug it in and then just turn this on. <clears throat> and immediately this drops down to about 2 volts, and this is maxed out at 3.5 amps. So what it's done is it's reached, it's reached the maximum current it can provide... And we've told it to limit the current to 3.5 amps. If you get to 3.5 amps, you shall produce no more. Therefore, the voltage has to drop. It can't continue producing 19 volts if it's maxed out at 3.5 amps. So I think it dropped down to about 2.5 uh, volts, which tells me I've got some serious uh, resistance in this motherboard. So it tells me essentially... Sorry about that. It tells me essentially I've got a dead short in here somewhere. So that's interesting. Uh, one other thing, and let's let's dead short this right here, and let's see what happens with it. So if we dead short the, the power supply, and if you already know this, uh, I think you should skip on, but let's just dead short this power supply. So we're going to connect the, um, the red lead right to the black over here and watch what happens. So there we're getting 0.25, 3.5 amps. Now this will start to get warm, and we'll probably damage these leads at 3.5. So let's change this down to 0.5 amps. And let's change it to 5 volts. Let's just get to some more manageable stuff. So here I am with a, I told it maximum of 0.5 amps, uh, 500 milliamps, 0.5 amps, 5 volts. And I'm going to dead short it. 
and we will see that we draw the 0.5 amps approximately, and we're down to 0 0.05 volts. But if you look, we're drawing uh, 20 milliwatts at this point, and that's because we told it to run 5 volts at half an amp, and that's the wattage, five, uh, 50 milliamps is what you're going to get for that. All right, I'm jumping around a lot, and I apologize for that. Um, the point is that wattage has to go somewhere. If we raise this back up to 3.5 amps, 19 volts, 20, 20 amps basically, uh, we're going to put quite a bit of wattage through there, and watts means heat. So that's what that's the point. Now just bear with me. I have a point, all right? I have a point here, and the point is that energy, that power rather, has to go somewhere. If that were a space heater putting out 1500 watts, it's going to get warm. If that was a 100 watt light bulb, it's going to get warm. Power makes heat. It all goes to heat, baby. So in this thing, if we power this up now with say 20 watts of electricity, and that 20 watts is going not going to running a computer and heating up the heat sink and the fan and all that kind of stuff, it's heating something here. And guess what? I found what it was heating. It was pretty easy to find. First off, I could sort of feel a little bit of heat right here on the power jack. So the next thing I did was got some alcohol. I didn't use the good vodka or the bullet or whatever drink of choice you like, and I really don't care about that, so uh, I don't have the best words for that. I have this alcohol, which is, uh, this is the non-drinking kind. This is isopropyl. So I took some alcohol here, and I just dabbed it around here, then I turned it on, and I looked under my microscope, which if you're not old and crusty like me, then you can use your young eyes. But I looked under my microscope and I looked for where the alcohol evaporated right away. So I put this on there, plugged it in, and would you not know it, but this little bitty chip that I've already removed, let's get a pointy thing. This little bitty chip right that was right there, that little chip would sizzle and crackle that alcohol right off the top. It wouldn't crackle, it would just evaporate. So, again, now we're almost catching up to the current episode. Uh, I took a hot air gun, which, you know, if you look and you go, oh my god, this guy, he's got such a beautiful set of ancient-ass equipment. Um, it's really not. It's not that big of a deal. This, I think, is 100 bucks on, uh, on uh, Alibaba. This is something that uh, EEV Blog and some others have reviewed the hell out of, and it has some aftermarket firmware in it that's really cool, and um, I can't say enough about that crazy-ass thing. This thing, these hot air, this is an old one, but the newer versions of these are like 100 bucks on Amazon. I t said you don't really need this, but they're not all that expensive. You don't need this, you don't need this, you don't need that, you don't need that, you don't need that. Probably need some wires, probably some solder some flux that's flux and you don't need a label printer and you all right back to the topic so um boy i forgot where i was on this can can someone help me out where i was i've forgotten oh oh yeah all right so this part got really hot and i took the hot air gun here and i blew some hot air on it you'll need a tweezers and I took my tweezers and I lifted it up just a little bit as I blew the hot air. As soon as the board fell down and the part stayed in the tweezers, I had my part off. And this is the part right here. And it is, uh, it doesn't look initially like it's a three lead part, but it is. It's got a lot, of, it's got a funky footprint. But it looks like it's an eight lead part with a thermal pad on it, but it's actually a three lead part. And a three lead part that gets really hot right by the power jet. Oh, uh, before I even go any further. So then I took that off and then plugged my power supply back in at 20 volts or 19 volts, 3.5 amps, doesn't matter. Turned it on and nothing happened. Now it didn't short out. Uh, pressed the power button. Of course, nothing happened. And if you wonder why nothing happened, and again, you don't have to be an electronic genius to know this, somewhere around here, there is going to have to be an electronic switch, basically a relay that turns this motherboard on. And in this case, Almost without question, that is said switch. That is almost certainly, and you'll know this term, this is a MOSFET. 
metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. I hope I've just blown you away with my genius electronics knowledge there. Um, a MOSFET is just a switch, and you'll see the schematic for it quite often. It looks like that, and it's sort of these thicker lines. And these all come, in my, in my estimation, I'm pretty sure I'm right on this. I'm not old enough for this, but these all come from tube, like a pentode or a triode or some sort of tube stuff. Not my thing. So um, anyway, that MOSFET is an electronic switch. It is not supposed to be shorted to ground, yet I take my multimeter and I touch it to the ultra. I have really nice sharp probes on these, by the way. So I take my multimeter and I touch it to the various three contacts and I measure the resistance from the three leads and I find out that it's essentially shorted. Zero ohms is a short. Zero ohms means current has no restriction to get through. Ohms is a barrier to current flowing. High ohms like mega ohms, when you get the zero M, zero overload mega ohms, that means there's essentially no resistance. I mean, the, there's a itsy bitsy teeny bit of couple electrons jumping across there, I'm sure, right now, but it's essentially zero, uh, no current flowing. You touch, touch them together, and you get a very low resistance to current flow, and that's what this thing was doing. So not only was it allowing current to flow from the power, the, the, elect the uh, power supply into the motherboard, but it was also allowing power to flow from power into ground. So it's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to only allow, supposed to connect power to power when you apply a signal here, but here it's going to ground also. So I believe this MOSFET is trash. Now the good news is I've got quite a few MOSFETs here. The bad news is I don't have this one. The even worse news is that I looked up the numbers on here by putting it under my super microscope. Uh, there's not a lot of markings on it. I went to look them up on the computer, but well, there's the computer. Well, there's the computer. So I have to go take a look for that and see if I can find this one. And I'll take a look at its rating, how much voltage and current it's able to pass. And I'll look around my stock of um, parts and see if I've got one that's even remotely close. And then I will take some wire from my bin O wire up here. I'll take some wires and I'll just solder in a MOSFET that connects this to my I'll solder in some jumper wires to connect this out to my little Tempo MOSFET. And if that all works, then I'll order, probably from DigiKey, I'll order a, a replacement for this if I can find it. <clears throat> and if I can find that and I can replace it, I'll bring this thing back up. <clears throat> now, um, I have to be honest, I really didn't feel like um, finding the problem with this. It's just that it was easy. So I ordered a replacement and... For all of those out there who know me, don't gasp, I bought brand new. Pretty crazy, I know, I bought brand new. I bought a Lenovo, I don't know, 90, some M90 Q Tiny, I guess. I am not into looking up and remembering all these names and stuff, so I think I bought an MQ90 Tiny. Don't take that as an endorsement of that particular machine, but I did. I bought a brand new one. Well, that's it for now. I hope this has a part two with a happy ending. Thanks for watching.